So let's take a quick moment to talk about how Rails is architected. It's using the MVC pattern or model view controller pattern. And this is how Rails decides how to process your request, where to find information in the database, and how to render your responses. So HTML, XML, JSON, JavaScript, there's all kinds of different formats. And the views are encompassing those types of formats. So the views are really your, your response body content. So this is HTML, it could be a CSV, it could be a PDF, it could be XML, it could be any of those formats. And this is what gets sent back to your browser and displayed. Um, this is what gets sent back to the browser and displayed. Now, um, when a request comes in, for example, we have a get to the about page and it's on our host 127001 and it's an HTTP 1.1 request. This is going to first go to Rails and say, hey, we've got a get request for the about route. Now there's really that third concept or fourth concept in here called routes. So routes are matchers for the URL that is requested. So when you have a get for about, um, this will say, let's, I see you requested slash about, we'll give that to the about controller to handle. So the routes in your Rails app are really just saying, here's the URL, let's give it to a controller to decide how to process that. So controllers decide how to process a request and define a response. So for example, your controller can say, hey, you tried to create a new user account, but your password wasn't long enough, so we're gonna give you an error back. But if it was long enough, then we could redirect you to the homepage or your dashboard. So controllers decide where things go, and it's the basic high-level logic of what should happen if things are requested. So when you go and create a user, it decides if it was successful, we'll send you here. If it wasn't, we'll send you there. Then your models are actually the database wrapper. So your model can be like a user model where you can query for records. So you can say, let's find all of the users who logged in in the last 24 hours. But you can also use your models to wrap individual records and give um, things like validation. So you can say that your username must be at least three characters long, for example. And so your database models are for just that, interacting with your database records and tables together. So your controller, for example, when you are using uh, loading up a user's profile on Twitter, the route will say, hey, we're looking for at exit three or at go rails. Let's go to the controller. Your controller will say, go find GoRails in the database. We're looking for that user with the username of GoRails. And if you find it, we will render out the HTML for their profile, the view for their profile. If we don't find them though, we can redirect to the homepage and give you an error and say, we weren't able to find that user. Or maybe we just redirect and, and uh, or just render an error for that page. It's entirely up to the controller to decide what gets um, loaded from the database and then how that's rendered out in your view. So it's really the thing that controls how the response or the request is handled. So that is MVC. The routes are kind of a crucial piece of this because of HTTP. That is what says, your browser says, hey, I want to do this specific thing. The routes say, okay, looks good. Let's give it to this specific controller to handle that for me. So that is MVC at a high level. I know that's probably quite a bit, but let's dive in and build our example for about inside of Rails.